the Colorado experience. It's therapy. <laughs> it's it's therapy. therapy. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Colorado Springs to visit Mike Cimino and check out a few of his cars. Now, Mike's a serious car guy, and most of his stuff is 60s muscle, which I have a great appreciation for, but he's also an off-road guy, and in fact, a hot rod off-road guy. So we got a couple really cool vehicles here, a 74 Bronco and a 76 Toyota Land Cruiser. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna enjoy it. I think you will too. Let's do this thing. This thing's fun. <laughs> Mike, great to see you, man. Hey, thanks for coming out, Dennis. Oh, what a beautiful day in Colorado Springs. Isn't this perfect <laughs> it or is, what? It is just about perfect. Yeah. yeah. And, and boy, you brought out, you've got a lot of cars. I mean, you're a car guy. But you brought out, I think, a couple perfect Colorado vehicles here. We got the 76 Toyota Land Cruiser and the 74 Bronco. And they're both just done, they're done so right and so cool. Let, let's start here. We're okay. Clo we're closest to Land Cruiser. So this is 76. They made this basically the same vehicle from... Starting when, like, I I would say that they started uh, making it from the Korean War. Oh, really? And they went into the the army, the military fields there, but then they they hit retail market in 1963. Okay. So this is actually an FJ40 Land Cruiser. Is FJ40 that the... Land Cruiser. Okay. And that's the inspiration of the new Land Cruiser that you see driving on the roads right, today. Right, right, right. When and you know they've kept a lot of the cues, styling cues and stuff yeah. from the day, you know, the colors and stuff are from the original. I mean, this is all Toyota gear up here too. Did it yeah. have this when you bought it? I changed some of this around. There is a Toyota bumper that's longer, that uh -huh. comes with OEM. Uh, this is more of a sport type bumper, but the winch that's on it is a 5280 Warner winch that was made uh, for it. But this looks like your steering, your power steering. Power steering, yeah. Now we did add that in the conversion, but that is Toyota equipment. Wow. Everything you see is pretty much stock, except for the, the uh, driving lights on the on there, and that just makes it look cool. It, it very cool, actually. Very <laughs> cool. You know, the other thing that I think makes it look cool is your wheels. But I wanted to keep it still in the the, the genre of year that it was in. Yeah. One of the things magical is trying to make it look good, but also keep it in that genre where it doesn't look like you're trying too hard. Yeah, yeah. I gave it a six inch lift, wow, even that's... though it doesn't look like it. It's mostly the big wheels and tires that that absorb that the, lift to balance it because it doesn't look like it's a, usually those things are like there's this huge gap yeah. between the, the body and the, and the and the tires when you have that kind of lift padded dash yeah that's the original dash uh it's just been covered in leather it looks kind of stock but it's obviously not yeah it's just it's just kind of cleaned up yeah what i did is i took the original spaces and i put the gauges within the original spaces while also enhancing the performance and the and the aesthetics of it the brushed aluminum yeah. the, the multi-gauges door panels the seats is that that's all just recovered oem original and and the roll cage was a uh, standard OEM. with these oem factory uh, roll cage but this is the coolest feature i that's really kind of what attracted me the land cruiser in general is that the rolled glass uh, corners and it is glass right it is glass and it's unique to the fj40 yeah it's great the thing looks you know stock but dressed up it just looks beautiful but i also saw a v8 on there and you're kind of a hot rodder yeah <laughs> and so i put a 350 fuel injected ramjet crate oh, motor in it well let's go look at that thing. okay it's pretty cool <laughs> now now so those are the, the hood releases what are these those are latches to hold down the windshield uh the, oh the, so she comes down and, and it locks down yeah it lays right here on these bumpers and then you just take these off and snap them on the hood the windshield so the windshield stays flat all right well let's let's see what you got under here because it's not the uh six-cylinder toyota mm, anymore this no, is not, it's not what you might find at home <laughs> holy cow so dennis what this is is it's a chevy 350 v8 fuel injected ramjet crate motor crate motor you know that's that's such a a, a, an easy way to go you know warranty the whole deal yeah and fuel injection makes it a dream to drive it fits amazingly well was that tough getting a 350 in this it, it wasn't but my technician might tell you otherwise <laughs> i i had a lot of help I had a, I had a lot of help but the 350 snaps between the frame rails very nicely with a minor adaption fuel injected 350 you got power steering you got air you got i mean it's really all all the all the creature comforts i bet it's a blast to drive too uh this vehicle is such a dream to drive 
Well, uh, c c could we take it out? Yeah, absolutely. Can I drive it? You can drive it. Yay. Let's do this. Hey, Dennis, my wife doesn't even drive it, but you could drive it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Close this baby up. Let's do this thing. And away we go. <laughs> right on. What would you do without selfies? What inspired you to hot rod a Land Cruiser? They're kind of naturally um, inspired to adapt to a Chevy drivetrain because I, I, I believe GM was involved with the engineering the frame of this vehicle oh, okay. to begin with. So it, there's just a few uh, adaption packages. Bolt and you on, can, basically? Bolt on, and you can bolt it right in. Going, uh, going fuel injected at this altitude is probably a smart thing to do. Oh, it was absolutely. I mean, you know, that's kind of the new thing is putting fuel injection in, in your modifieds. And it just makes them run really nice and responsive and start right away, which you don't always get <laughs> with the carbureted system for sure. And you go, I mean, you can go from uh, out here from 4,000 to 14,000 in not too long. That's and that right. makes a big difference in a carbureted vehicle. It makes a huge difference. We have Pikes Peak in our backyard here. And we could be at top Pikes Peak in an hour. Well, it sure doesn't sound like a Toyota, though. Does it? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but it sounds good. It does <laughs> sound good. <laughs> I imagine this whole uh, kind of upgrading is, is, a, is a big trend for these because they really are trucks. You know, they, they are. Today, trucks are built like Cadillacs and um, have all the amenities. Sure back do. When they're, back when they these were built, they were built for work and need and necessity. But they are cultish. I mean, yeah, like oh, the Bronco, absolutely. they really. And with an increased following, I think an ever increasing following. Yeah, it is. So a hot rodded 76 Land Cruiser is a lot of fun. Oh yeah. But that Bronco, that Bronco you looks even crazier. Bronco. I do love that Bronco. <laughs> let's go, let's go check out that Bronco. <laughs> hey, that is one fun. Land Cruiser. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> that I mean, that 350 makes a big difference in that. that Smooth, little doesn't it? It's nice. Love the five speed and everything. But let's but let's talk Ford. A 74 Bronco, right? Yeah. Well, she's really beautiful, and it looks like you've brought this up a little bit too. Is this lifted or not? Yeah, it's lifted too. It's lifted also six inches. Originally bought it as a plow truck. Uh -huh. to, to, to move <laughs> snow, and I started diving into it, and I said, no, this that's, deserves more than a plot truck. That's the fanciest snow mover I've ever seen. I guess <laughs> well, <laughs> it didn't look quite like this. <laughs> so what's the color? That's not a Bronco color. It is a 2008 Z06 Corvette Atomic Orange. Oh, okay. And then you've countered that with kind of a silver gray, which, as I look close, it's got like a rainbow uh, flake in it. Yeah, yeah, it, it glistens. It does, and you know, it's subtle, but it really adds some pop to it. Is the hood fiberglass? The hood and the door uh, jams are the only things that are fiberglass. The whole body is OEM steel. Again, it's your suspension and stuff. I mean, this thing, this thing looks really serious underneath. It, it but, is. It's 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 as pretty underneath as it is on top. Now you got the doors off, and you got these these inserts. Yeah. Uh, these are fiberglass, but can they come right off? They if you come put doors right off, and I bolt my doors right on. That really cleans it up, doesn't it? Yeah, and it really gives you a whole different feel of the drive. I mean, this feels more like riding a motorcycle <laughs> with being outdoors. I mean, and of course, I don't even own the top to it. So, or, so it, this is how it is. This is how it is. You're this is how we drive it, it. Yeah. When you got this, you know, just this little sunshade top, which you can pop off if it's really sunny. And, yeah. And, you know, again, you did a really clean job on the dash. What I really wanted to accomplish on that is try to still accomplish some of the uh, authenticity. Uh -huh. So even though it doesn't have the original gauges, the, the gauges are antiqueish or, or well, in they the almost genre. look like it yeah they look like it belong with it and then like the land cruiser i took a uh, billet aluminum uh -huh. and accented some of the neat points like the steering wheel column uh, the, the master control center up there did you shoot bed liner in, inside or what what's the flooring like a rhino liner i lost the, the carpets i didn't want to put carpets down i wanted to see steel i wanted yeah. the vehicle to be able to be rained on 
you and know, just hose not, it out. And just hose it out. I like the seats too. I mean, you kind of want a, a custom uh, direction there too. My goal there was to try to find something that was comfortable, but yet held me in the vehicle because a vehicle like this, you get kind of tossed around a little bit. And there's and, no doors. And there's no doors. <laughs> so yeah, you want to, I didn't want to fall out. So I tried to find something that would, that was, uh, again, back to the, the uh, genre of the vehicle and uh, and was functional. So now this roll bar is something, roll cage, not a bar, cage is something you added, right? Yeah, it's a four inch and it's it's heavier duty than the, the uh, ones that normally are installed. But I found it really more aesthetically inviting and made it uh, rough and tough. I see, I just noticed the tunes all through too. These must be, are they waterproof speakers? Yeah, I, I made it to, to uh, be able to sit in the rain and not get damaged. <laughs> and, and jam. Yeah, I don't think it's ever been in the rain, but that said. <laughs> now, and this is, a, this is another one of these custom touches? Yeah, another, it's from Pre-Runner and, and it's the same style. What I'm most proud of is the Denver Bronco Broncos. on the back <laughs> well, there. Of course. Not that it inspired the color at all. No, no, no. But um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a nice little uh, touch to make it an off-road look. I saw she was still badged 302. Yeah. You sell the original engine? Sure do. Let's go look at it, all man. All right. Oh, she's fiberglass, but it's still kind of hefty. Yeah, well, it, it's got the shock absorbers on it. Yeah, it so stays it up by itself. It stays nice. Nice, and, nice and firm up you, there. You know what's funny is, because um, this is the original motor for this and it, it uh I mean it looks like a tight fit it is well it's a 302 and uh it's been completely remanned but it hasn't been high performance the 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 look of it is more high performance than what it really is but i did put uh, ceramic headers on it uh -huh. it's got a four bell on it and on this also tried to hide as much wiring as i could could the broncos were very um uh, prehistoric underneath. They had stuff running everywhere. And the and these panels and all were very rough. <laughs> well, you know, and this is such a great engine. I mean, the 302 is just, it's, it's, it's just a bulletproof engine. It has been a great motor for Ford. So I bet this runs pretty nice. It runs pretty nice, smooth. Yeah, You're yeah. You're going to get a lot of looks, Dennis. <laughs> well, let's go get some of those looks. Let's right, close let's get it up. It. So key and then a way cool starter button. <laughs> Here we go. Well, it's got a little rumble to it too, doesn't it? Varoom. Varoom. <laughs> Down off the hill. Boy, you know, uh, this has got a completely different feel. Yeah, it's it got does, a really it? light touch on the steering. Yeah. Well, and this has got a great custom look to it. You know, I mean, the Bronco, stock Bronco is a beautiful vehicle too, but you've really done a nice job in, with the look in this thing. I gotta tell you, my, my, the guys that see my collection, work on my collection, this is more times than not their favorite. Bronco has a has that American heritage behind it, and it's been very popular for a long time. It's got a real loyal following. A real has. loyal following, and guys like me that grew up, you know, in the 70s and 80s, um, you know, we saw the Bronco come and go. Yeah. A cousin of mine owned a Bronco and I was a little kid when he owned it, and he gave me a ride in it, I don't know, probably 12 or 13 years old. It made an impression. And ever since then, Dennis, I wanted one. <laughs> and this is actually my second. A lot of us were influenced in our youth. You know, there was something that spoke to you when you were, you know, at, at that impressionable age. And, uh, you know, whether it was a Bronco, or in my case, a, a Thunderbird, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh man, you know. When I can have one, I'm gonna have one. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what I think, you know, fuels a lot of collectors to, to take that to a whole new level and put their own, like I did, this is kind of an extension of my own self in it. And, and, and this still- is yet preserve, This is the Mike This is the Mike Mobile. Mobile. But still preserve <laughs> that Ford uh -huh. original heritage. Very, first person I had drive this past myself after the restoration, which was days after we got it out of the shop, was my dad. And, did he know, dig it? <laughs> he, yeah, he, he really did dig it. He, he loved it. 
but you know your dad's going to tell you the truth, right? And uh, and he and he got in and drove it, and, and after driving it, I said, "Well, what do you think?" And he says, "I I think it rolled me back 20 years in age." <laughs> So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.